Yes, hopping toys. Beauts, aren't they? But they're 30 or 40 years old, these ones, and I have to say they don't really work anymore. But this one does, just to show what they, the others all did when they were fully young and alive and able to do things. A little action like that needs a micromotor. It was quite a step forward in technology in the 1980s when they first invented that motor. The original ones, you'll see an example of the early ones, weren't like this at all, but I think Woodstock was the very first one with a micromotor in it, as I call it. A tiny little knurled wheel and, you'd, and a, a, a low tension spring and a lovely action so you can miniaturise and make tiny ones. So I'm looking for my collection of uh, hopping toys, and there's a big variety of them over here. For instance, I think one of the most extraordinary ones, the most interesting ones, is not actually a wind-up, which most of them are. It's this one here, which is a kangaroo that relies on gravity. This is made by some artisan, I think, in, in Britain about 20 or 30 years ago. You set him down a slope. It's a kangaroo. When you've got the right sort of slope, let's get a little bit deeper, a little bit steeper. That's what he does. Top, 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 and it's a perfect hopping action for a, a kangaroo and fall off. What a lovely idea, that. So a hopping action is very realistic. But I have to say, some of these hopping toys are not exactly realistic. They're bizarre. I mean, these ones here, for instance, this is in the box called Rock and Roll. There's the rock and there's the roll. <laughs> it's a, just a, an English expression for, uh, for some early pop music. Hopping rock, roll and a hopping rock as well. Very bizarre, strange, but it's nice. It's quite fun to see things like that. This is a very, very recent rock, which has got a beautiful extra action, which I've never seen before, which is, I think, superb, because the wings open and close, and that's delightful. So that's definitely got to go into my collection of simple wind-ups. It's lovely to see things like that working so well, too. Here's a very strange one. They called it um, Flying Snake or Flying at Snake. And this is the old-fashioned type wind-up thing, so it, was, it required a bit of spring energy to make this work. But the idea of a hopping snake is just totally bizarre, I think. Put it in, wind it up, put it on the table and let it go. Very strange idea, this. Here it goes. I've heard of sidewinders. In fact, I've seen them on the nature programmes. But a, a hopping snake? I don't think so. Very, very strange, but interesting. Okay. <laughs> And also with surrealism in mind, here's a, a hopping birthday cake. Frankly, you can do almost anything with hopping. I did think the other day they ought to have perhaps, would you believe that, a hopping hop? That'd be a hop plant, you know, which is used for growing beer, all tendrils and leaves and things, and then have it hopping around. And on the box it says, this is a hopping hop. Mm, yeah, well, okay, well anyway, that's a hopping birthday cake. Bit of fun there. The earliest versions of my hopping toys were before those micromotors came out and they were relying on little air bulbs. And when you squeeze this, the legs of the frog did an action like that, which is quite sweet. So the frog sort of hopped. It's got, this one's got a little, little tiny frog on the back, which is rather, rather sweet, a mother frog. But it's uh, a bit laboured now because, you know, the, well, the legs are OK. It's just that the, the plastic gets a little bit stiff after a while and it doesn't seem to work too well. But another version which I came across was this one here, in which when you squeeze the bulb, the legs, the whole of the back of the two legs open up like that, and that created a hopping action, actually, which is quite sweet. Did a little hopping action like that. But that would be about 40 to 50 years old, I think, at least. A long, long, long way back. There's a Tommy toy, which is a wind-up, um, a bit larger than the normal ones, which is really quite interesting, because it does such a slow action. But the Tommy products, the Tommy toys, are some of the best I've ever come across in my collection. One or two of those tiny ones were Tommy toys as well. Look at this. And I love the way the head pops up like that. <laughs> go on, make your head go back. Yes, my goodness, what an extraordinary action. Love it, I love it. Yeah, oh well. There's another very strange wind-up, a very early one, because this is actually a tin toy, which is this one here. What is he doing? He's got a wind-up. He's got legs which go into two positions, which is most bizarre. When you go forward like that, then he does do a hopping action. Well, sort of hopping, I suppose. But if you put the legs back, you've got the legs doing an action like that, which is very strange. But we put the legs back, and now he goes round. Oh, he's not. Wonderful idea. And that's a tin toy. Well, halfway between tin and plastic, because parts of it are plastic as well. So another very, very extraordinary idea. 
And I've even got a battery operated hopper. This is a bunny rabbit, it's got batteries inside. Turn him on and he's going to hop. Now that is cute, isn't it? And small children would love it because they can stroke it. 